Hi there, we're going to take a few minutes in this topic video to think about an intervention in markets, the idea of maximum prices or price ceilings. So in many industries, the government or it could be an industry regulator can set a maximum price which prevents the market price from rising above a certain threshold or a certain level. Maximum prices have come in the news in recent times, lots of topical examples to think about. Some economists and some politicians are arguing we should introduce uh, rent controls in the housing market to improve affordability. Uh, there's been a debate about whether or not there should be an energy price cap to keep fuel bills under control. In the labour market, should we impose a maximum cap on the pay of chief executives and, and bonuses in the financial markets? The European Union has introduced a cap on roaming charges and tax calls in the EU. Indeed, those caps are coming down and roaming charges will be abolished from 2017. Uh, there were debates about whether there should be a, a what kind of price capping formula should be used for the regional water monopoly companies. Uh, a couple of years ago, the Financial Conduct Authority introduced a cap on the interest rates that could be charged by payday lenders, such as Wonga. They capped interest rates at 0.8% per day. Uh, should there be a cap on the charges that are made on occupational pension plans? And at a macro level, of course, so countries can, enjoy, uh, can decide to operate with a fixed exchange rate. They can operate a cap on their exchange rate. The Hong Kong dollar, for example, is currently capped and pegged to the US dollar. That might change. So here we're thinking about the economics of price caps, maximum prices in, uh, in a sector. Well, we're going to work through the analysis in the next couple of minutes. So we hope, hopefully this will be straightforward for you. If there's a free market in the economy, this particular market, it doesn't really matter what it is. The market, of course, reaches equilibrium where market supply meets market demand. Now, what about the introduction of a maximum price into this market? Well, the key point, the key revision point, is that a maximum price must be set below the normal free market equilibrium. If it's going to have any effect on the market, it must be set below the normal free market, which, of course, in our example here is P1 and Q1. So I'm going to put in a maximum price now. Here it is. There's my price ceiling. And I've set it below P1. I've set it a little distance below the equilibrium. Now this, of course, has consequences. One of the effects is that the price is now lower than it has been. That should cause an expansion along the demand curve to Q2. Consumers want to buy more. But producers have less of an incentive to supply at the maximum price. So we might expect to see supply contract from Q1 to Q3. So as a result, of course, we've created in the market excess demand equal to the, the horizontal distance between Q2 and Q3. That's the basic economics of a maximum price. The maximum price, of course, could uh, be affected. Uh, so the excess demand in the market could be affected if there's an increase in demand. So I've now shifted my demand curve out. Perhaps incomes have risen or there's been a change in consumer tastes and preferences. If we hold the maximum price here, you can see there's now an even bigger excess demand in the market. So one of the evaluation points could be, if you set a maximum price, is that a rigid price? Is it fixed in stone? Or is it a flexible ma maximum price to take into account changing conditions, for example, a changing market demand curve? Keep that in mind. OK, so now we're going to take the analysis a little bit further. The basic analysis of a price ceiling we've been through, you set a maximum price below the free market price and that creates excess demand. That, that will get you so far. That's good analysis. Let's just take a little bit further. So let's go back to our original diagram. Here's our maximum price below the free market equilibrium. And we've created an excess demand equal to Q2 minus Q3. Now the key point is if that is the maximum price officially in the market, then unofficially, if there's only Q3 available for people to consume, there are some consumers who are willing and able to pay price P2, which of course is much higher than the maximum price that we've established. So you could get the emergence of an unofficial price, if you like a shadow price, above the ceiling. So officially the price is down here. Unofficially, if the quantity is restricted to Q3, the people who are willing to pay up to P2. That's a really key analysis point. 
who restrict the quantity to Q3, some consumers are willing to pay an unofficial price of P2, and uh, some producers may decide, well, let's, there's a lot of consumer surplus here that we could possibly extract if we can charge a higher price in an unofficial shadow market. And that shaded area here in yellow, if you charge P2, is the extracted consumer surplus above the official price ceiling. Now, it could be the case if Q3 is the only amount that's left in the market, if producers have cut back their supply, you need some rationing or some auction process if you want to restrict the output to Q3. In the absence of an official black market, for example, you might have to auction off the uh, or ration, in particular, ration the quantity so that people, uh, the quantity stays at Q3 and the price stays at the maximum price. So it's quite important in your analysis to, when you're thinking about a price ceiling, to think about the consequences. And uh, if we go back to our diagram here, think about consumer surplus, think about producer surplus. The basic maximum price diagram is fairly straightforward. But if you just take your analysis a little stage further to show the possibility of a shadow or black market developing, consequences for consumer welfare if there are two, two prices, then yes, you've shown the effect of a price ceiling, but you don't want to gloss over some of the key extra analysis bits. Thanks for joining in.